brothers and sisters, I can never get enough of God's love. And if you can never get enough of God's love, could you stand to your feet and give God a praise? Yeah. That's the seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemies came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blades were sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servant of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, did thou not sow good seed in thy field? From what then hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy has done this the servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, you root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and in the time of harvest I will say unto the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. The blessed word of God for the blessed people of God. You may be seated in the presence of the Holy Ghost. Brothers and sisters, if I could ask you a question on today, it would simply be, why did the enemy come at night and sow tares in the good man's field? 
The book of Genesis said in the beginning that God made everything good. If you are a Christian, when you were saved and baptized, you were since buried to sin and planted to be raised in the spirit. You were planted in fertile soil in the loving bosom of God. Only good seed was planted beside you. So why is all this bad seed forever present in your life? Brothers and sisters, you say, what is a bad seed? A bad seed is a person regarded as bad or corrupt by nature and liable to have harmful influence on others. What are some of the characteristics of bad seeds, Pastor? I'm talking about backbiting and lying, gossiping and, and troublemaking, bitterness, disrespectful behavior, and ungratefulness. The people that the devil planted in your life to make you give up your great position in Jesus Christ. He did this simply because he was willing, he willingly gave up his position in heaven. The devil wants you to throw in the towel. He wants you to give up. When the situations get rough, you when the situations get rough, you must trust in the Lord. Brothers and sisters, you may be feeling like giving up right now, but don't give up. There is strength and courage inside of you, and it is time to tap into that strength and into that courage. And that strength and that courage is Jesus Christ. The strength and courage, brothers and sisters, is simply Jesus Christ. All power is in his hand. And if he has all power in his hand, then you have all of his power in your hand. Remind yourself of all times that you come through the difficult situations in your past. You kept holding on because you were holding on to God's intention. Hey, 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 hey. Just hold on in there, brothers and sisters, and remind yourself that you can do this and that you will come out stronger and wiser. Can I get a witness in here? Hey, 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 hey. Hold on and never give up. You are capable of so much more than you can ever imagine. God We'll see you through. Amen. And if I could leave a message in here on today, it would simply be, just hold on. Are you holding on in this place Amen. on today? Thank if you're holding on in here on today, can I get a witness? Can I get an exhortation? Can I get somebody to lift up the name of God in this house on today? You know he's been good to you. You know he's made a way of escape. You know he's always been there. So why can't you See, you cannot separate the tares from the wheat. Because, brothers and sisters, when God planted the tares in the field, he planted something that was good. God planted you, and you are good, 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 just like the Father Almighty. But why all of a sudden is all of this stuff going on in your life? Why, is it seem, why does it seem like at every turn the enemy is at bay? The enemy is attacking attacking you and the enemy is trying to take you down brothers and sisters simply because the enemy wants to go where you're going because he's been there and he can never I say this consistently misery loves company and we have to understand who the enemy is attacking the enemy is attacking you but he's attacking you to get to the owner So the owner looks at what's going on. I'm going to have to stand over here for a moment because we have some interference over here. So the owner looks at what's going on. And brothers and sisters, the angels of the Lord comes to the owner and they say, uh, 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 God, we know that you're planting good seed. So what happened? Why did all of these tares show up in the middle of your kingdom? And God simply says to the angels, he says this, brothers and sisters. He says, I know what I did. My, my seed had veracity. My seed had goodness. My seed had truthfulness. But the devil has come in while we will sleep overnight and has planted tares amongst the seed. Brothers and sisters, if there's a tear in your life on today, you don't have to worry about a thing. Just hang on in there. Just keep holding on. God will see you through. So the enemy, so the enemy has sown tares in the field. And you know what the tares come to do? The tares come to devalue your life. The tares come to tear you down. The tares come to steal your witness. The tares come to steal brothers and sisters. Your worship and brothers and sisters, if you're not careful, the tales will get you kicked out of the kingdom of God. You see, that's what the devil wants to do. The devil 
to get you kicked out of the kingdom of God. But if you're already in there, God said that I have prepared a, a, a new thing for you. I have prepared something divine from you. And I will, I will see you through because Jesus is going to work it out for you. How many believe in this place on the day that Jesus is going to work it out for you? Has Jesus ever, ever lied to you, brothers and sisters? No, brothers and sisters. If he said it, he is not a man that he can lie. If he said it, then it will come true. So these tears are in your life. What's going on with these tears, Pastor? What's simply going on with these tears is that the devil is trying to devalue your character. The devil is trying to make you blow up and act a fool up in this place. But see, the problem with that, if the devil can't get you by putting muck and dirt all around you, then he will attack you and steal the nutrients in the soil, brothers and sisters, that you are trying to grow from. See, you could be stronger. You could be mightier. You could be holier. You could be righteous, more righteous. But you can't be because the enemy is sucking all of the nutrients around you, brothers and sisters. How do you get these nutrients that the pastor is talking about in this place on today? Let me calm down. <laughs> you get these nutrients simply by reading your word, simply by going to church, simply by being on your face, prospering before the Lord. What is wrong with us on today? We don't even want to roll out of the bed and get on our knees and pray. But whenever we need something from the Lord, brothers and sisters, that's when we cry out and that's when we cry loud. But God said, if you don't give me something, then you will not have any. Anything, and I will not give you anything. Somebody is saying, that's not fair, Pastor. I'm broken. I don't have anything. The reason why you don't have anything is because you don't believe in the principle of giving, brothers and sisters. God said give, and it shall be given unto Amen. you. And when you give unto the kingdom of God, if you go to work, brothers and sisters, whatever sacrifices that you make, then God will bless you 100 fold. What's going on in the world? When the world cannot focus on kingdom building, they are calling themselves Christians and they're focusing on world building. They're focusing on, on building up the financial situation. They're focusing on building up the families. But when you give it to the Lord, God will give you brothers and sisters a hundred fold. So we can't say that we're Christian and we're acting like like tears because what separates the good seed from the tears is brothers and sisters what it produces you see we produces life we produces bread we produces something that can sustain you we produces something that the kingdom of God can use but a tear produces nothing the only thing a tear produces heartache the only thing a tear produces brothers and sisters is sadness and robbing you of your joy so to, to sum it all up a, a tear can only produce poison and if you're producing poison then you have been corrupted by the seed that the enemy has planted and the enemy has put that seed around you because the enemy wants to destroy you but brothers and sisters, I got news for you. If I planted good seed, then guess what? I am going to reap good seed. Who in here wants to reap good seed in here on today? I don't think anybody wants to reap a tear in here on today. Because when you reap tears, you know what you're going to reap? Death and destruction. But whenever you reap the harvest, whenever Jesus comes to gather the harvest, then guess what? You will be gathered into the bond of eternal life. How many wants to go into the bond of eternal life? Brothers and sisters, we have to understand something in here on today. That everybody that smiles in your face, they're not your friends. Without oh, somebody coming to you showing those hey, teeth, hey. you better look behind that teeth because a lot of times there's ulterior moments.
I'm going to terrify our brothers and sisters, but God is dealing with us, and God is edifying us, and God is sanctifying us, and it's on a daily basis, and God is saying that if you want to be like him, then you have to love like him, you have to act like him, we can't separate ourselves because of our differences, we ought to, we are supposed to be like our Father, which art in heaven. You see, let me tell you something. Brothers and sisters, because somebody joke with you, because somebody laughs at you, you know how people are. They say they love you, but whenever you meet them, brothers and sisters, in certain locations, in certain situations, they shake your hand and they stab you in the back. They laugh at your jokes, and then all of a sudden they're thinking negative thoughts about you. And whenever you leave, they turn around and say, I'll never like them anyhow. But see, brothers and sisters, a week does not do that. A week is concerned about your emotional state. A weed is concerned about your spiritual state. So why in the world did the devil come and did he plant tears amongst the wheat? He planted tears amongst the wheat because he wanted to send everybody that loved the Lord straight to hell, brothers and sisters. And if that's where you are on your way to on today, then God is saying that he is waiting for the harvest. And whenever the harvest comes, if you have not made up your mind, then your mind will be made up for you. I never understood. Yes, I did. Because I used to be a sinner as well. I had it going on. I was enjoying life. At least as I thought I was enjoying it. I was doing whatever made the flesh feel good. And I was doing it, brothers and sisters, with disregard to my future. But one day, God stepped in and God said, son, you got to turn this thing around. I have predestined you for greatness. I have predestined you to be heirs to the throne of righteousness. And brothers and sisters, as the transformation began to take place, I went from being a tear to, the, to a wheat, and the enemy was so upset with that. And if there's anybody in here, under the sound of my voice, who is tired of being torn, who is tired of being jacked up, who is tired of being whacked up, who is tired of being used and abused, and God is simply saying, in this place of today, that you need to be with brothers and sisters, that you need to produce more than the you need to produce something that is beneficial to the kingdom of heaven. You see, a tear can tell a lie, but a wheat cannot lie. You see, a tear can backbite, but a wheat cannot backbite. You see, a tear will disrespect, but a wheat will give respect. You see, a tear will not show up for, for, for quarterly conference, but a wheat will show up for quarterly conference. Brothers and sisters, we need to examine ourselves in here on today and see if the devil has turned us off of the track of Jesus Christ because God is patient and God is sitting high and God is saying to the angels and to you who are in strife, who are going through in this place on today, just hang on in there. I already made a way of escape. Just hang on in there. If you sown something, brothers and sisters, that's beneficial to the kingdom, then I will see you through. I will be your bridge over trouble water. Brothers and sisters, God cannot fail you. God has all power, and the enemy is nothing in, in comparison to God. But see, God needs you to go to the next level of glory in Christ Jesus. So if you find yourself going through, just hang right on in there. Your payday is coming after a while because God will never leave you and God will never forsake you. I'm almost ready to get out of your way. You see, the devil put the tares in your life because you're trying to do great things. You see, whenever you start to impact the kingdom of God, that old jealous devil, let me slow it down. Give me a little bit of whatever that is over there. Let me slow it down. Get rid of it, brother. See, whenever you start to impact the kingdom of God, that old jealous devil, Good for nothing, slew footed Satan with his own ugly self, always stepping away. He said, I can't let them have that kind of impact. I can't let them draw more souls from the kingdom of God. So I got to step in. I can't go out like this. Even though my walls are crumbling down, I have to do something. So, brothers and sisters, what God is saying is I've already made a way of escape. You just hang on in there. Brothers and sisters, that enemy cannot take it down because I put a hedge of protection. A hedge of protection. So if you have that hedge of protection, if I have that hedge of protection, why can't they see the hedge of protection? Because 
because the enemy came at night time. You see, the enemy had to come at night time because he couldn't do what he wanted to do. You see, he was confined to doing things a particular way. So he came at night time. See, what does night time mean in this parable? Night time simply means that you lack discernment, that you let everybody hook up. Anybody that wants to come into your circle, anybody that wants to come into your field, you want to please everybody. But you can't please everybody. You need to please the Lord. devil has put a target on your back. He knows the effect that you have in your family. He knows the effect that you have in your church. He knows the effect that you have in your community. He knows the effect that you have on your job. He knows the effect that you have in the kingdom of God. And he is simply fed up in time. Because you are pulling down strongholds. Because you have the integrity of the seed. You have the goodness of the seed. You have God deep down in the inside. You only go feel you're baptized in the Holy Spirit and the devil can't touch you. You see, when the devil was in heaven, he was going around to and fro, seeking whom he may devour, brothers and sisters. He was going around to and fro, seeking who he made the seed. Can you imagine the conversation in the Garden of Eden? Here it is. Adam and Eve have separated. They're going to do their duties. You know how it is. Uh, uh, whenever you, you, you head off to work, everything in the household is so peaceful. You can't wait to get back. But you've got to go and deal with society. So Eve is dealing with society, carrying on her own business. She didn't have any tires in the field. And all of a sudden, the devil had been watching her. See, this just doesn't happen in five minutes. The devil had been paying attention. He had been waiting for the moment to strike. He had set the situation up. And when Eve stepped into the garden, brothers and sisters, when she went to a particular place in the garden, Eve saw the snake or the serpent. And Eve, the serpent, came up and said, Hey, you hot, your highness, uh, uh, queen of the universe, uh, the most fair maiden that ever lived. You look good, and you look good doing what you do. So that right there, brothers and sisters, you got to watch those teeth that are smiling before you because he had ulterior motives, and the enemy has ulterior motives in your life. And all of a sudden, he said, what in the world is going on? This serpent is talking to me. No other beast in the garden could talk. And the serpent had the nerve to say, the reason I can talk to you is because of that delicious smelling fruit over there on yonder tree. Child, you better go get some. You see, it elevated my mind and now I can communicate to you. And the devil is lying to somebody in here on this afternoon, brothers and sisters, and he's trying to tell you the same thing, but he is a liar and the father of lies. Don't believe anything he says because he's sitting here telling Eve that the tree of knowledge of good and evil has made him, brothers and sisters, and given him the cognition to be able to communicate with somebody who is a godlike creature. And Eve said to herself, if it didn't kill him, if it made him that smart, then I could be godlike too. And when she bit the tree, look at where we are now. Brothers and sisters, that's what a tear is. You see, the tear was served, or it was sown in the Garden of Eden, and we are reaping the reward from the tear. But a long time ago, Jesus stepped in, and Jesus made a way of escape. And Jesus is saying in here on today, if you're tired of being beat up, if you're tired of being messed up, if you're tired of being torn up from the floor up, then I have made a way of escape. You do not have to be in the confinements of the enemy that I have set you free. Whenever I die on the cross, I rose with all power in my hand. How much do you suck the authority of the enemy? And I have given you back your authority. Who believe that they have their authority in this place on today? If you believe that you have that authority that Jesus died and rose with, then raise your hands. If you believe that you have that authority that God has given you in your life, then raise your hands. But that's not the end of it. Just hold on in there. Because not only did God give you authority, but God gave you power. You see, God gave you power with that authority. And he told you to use that power as you so. See, then, brothers and sisters, as you desire to conquer the enemy. Because when the enemy comes into your garden and he sows a tear, then you just hold on because God has already made a way of escape. You just hold on and 
Father, this is to continue to reap what you sow. If you reap joy, just hold on. Joy is coming in the morning. If you reap money, just hold on. Your, your bank account is going to be big tomorrow. If you reap peace, brothers and sisters, just hold on. Because peace is coming your way. And if you reap sickness, then guess what? God is going to kill you anyway. But if you reap, brothers and sisters, everything that's around you, God is going to see you through. Nobody can control. Nobody can, can, can be compatible to the strength and the elevation of God. And God is saying it here on today that I came that I may prosper you. I came that I may elevate you. I came that I may give you joy. Some speak of joy. Does anybody want to? This joy. This is speak of joy that I'm talking about in here on today. Let's get excited about who God is. Let's get excited. nor will he ever forsake us. And God is simply saying this, if you believe in who I am, then nothing shall be impossible for you. If you believe who I am, then brothers and sisters, then you should realize that nothing shall be impossible for me. That if you believe who I am, then I will make a way of escape. You see, I did it 2,000 years ago on the cross. Whatever you had, brothers and sisters, whatever you were going through, I nailed it to the cross. You see, we should have been on that cross, but God stayed right up there. He could have come down, but he looked through the hand of the time, and God saw me on that cross, and God saw you and you and you on that cross, and God stayed right up there. He could have called on ten legions, six legions of angels, but he stayed right up there because God knew the enemy had sown a tear. In his week, and God knew the only way that he could save us was to let the tares grow together. Brothers and sisters, God is saying in here on today that you do not have to be confined to what you're going through, to the prisoners of you don't have to be a prisoner of sickness in your body. You don't have to be a, a prisoner being in a bad manipulative relationship. You don't have to be a prisoner to not having financial gain in your life. You don't have to be a prisoner to the lies of the enemy because God has sown good seed and you are that good seed. And what God is saying in here on today, if you are that good seed, then you can't sit on the seat of do nothing because you've got to do the work. See, the, the laborers are few. But the harvest is plenteous, and God needs us to be working on today. And when we work for the kingdom of God, guess what? We're going to reap what we sow. When you see me riding by in my nice car, don't be a player hater. I reap that. I sow that, brothers and sisters. When you see me living in my nice house, don't be upset with me. I sow that, brothers and sisters. When you see joy in my life, you see, I just held on. You see, I never gave up because I knew where my help come from. Don't get mad with me because I'm happy, because I'm not bitter. Brothers and sisters, when you see the goodness that God has prepared for yourself, then you should give him praise. Everybody in here under the sound of my voice should be standing to their feet right now. If God has done it for you, you should And God is saying on today, no matter what you are going through, just hang on in there. The victory has already been won. Brothers and sisters, if you're confused, and you don't know which road to take, if you have come to an impasse, and you have to go left or you have to go right, go right. Because right is righteousness. God is simply saying this. I have given my only begotten son. That you may have life. And have life more abundantly. You're going through because I put you there. To test you. And I have made a way of escape. All you have to do is be patient and just hold on to my unchanging hand. God does not desire 
to pull up the tares along with the wheat because the tares have a greater root system. And if he pull up the tares, then he's going to destroy the wheat with the tares. And brothers and sisters, whatever the enemy planted them, he planted them when nobody was looking, but see, God was looking. He knows the things end before things begin, and he knew that you will be in this condition that you're in. And as he sat in the throne of heaven, and the enemy was getting ready to sow the tares in the garden of Eden, Jesus looked over and said, God, we see what he's about to do. God said, time doesn't exist for me. I knew this was going to happen. For all we know, he might be replenishing the third of the angels that fell from heaven. We do not know the mindset of God. But a tear looks just like a wheat. You can shout like you want to shout. You can yell and holler like you want to holler. You can scream. You can act like a Christian. But bottom line, what you produce determines if you are a Christian. And if you are not producing a good harvest that God can use in the kingdom of heaven, He's a God of new mercies. He just wants us to get right. See, when we get right, whenever we become Christians, then God is preparing us for our eternal walk. He's preparing us how to live in heaven. And if you're going to live in heaven, you're going to live in heaven where God is. You're going to live in heaven. You're going to be holy and righteous. can't tell what they are until they produce the fruit. Last thing I want to ask everybody in here on today before the altar call is what type of fruit are you producing? Ponder on that this week. Footnote. Just hold on. What type of fruit are you producing? God is saying on today, you are here because I called you. You are here because I drew you. You are here because it is time to surrender to me and no longer be contained and confined by Satan. God is saying that he sent a spirit by you to focus you into coming to the altar. Because time is drawing near, brothers and sisters. We do not know when the end is going to be. But for me, my end is going to be running for the Lord. Amen. Because when this old war is over, I will have to stay the warning. But while I am here, this is a fact that I'm willing to fight. No, I am not going to take a step. Because if you take one foot back, that's the same thing to push him out of you. Yes, Lord. Yes, please. So I'm going to be like Kendrick. Kendrick has those hands, brothers and sisters, on every room over there. And when he's boxing and he's coming forward, he's bobbing, weeping, he's coming forward. That's how you have to attack Satan on the day. And God is saying, come forward, bobbing and weeping. Come forward and give your life unto me. Come forward and surrender your own unto me and I will make you co-heirs to the throne of righteousness. I will give you the desires of your heart. I will open up the windows of heaven and pull you out of blessing. Not only will I bless you, but I will bless everybody in your circle, everybody in your fear, everybody that you love, brothers and sisters. In the enemy, the only thing he's going to do for you is use you and abuse you and send you straight to him. So God is saying in this place on today, I've broken it down and I've made it plain and I've made it simple. What is your answer? Do you desire to serve Satan or do you desire to serve me? What has he sacrificed? Nothing. The 
altar is open for anyone who would consider dedicating their life to a God who died to set them free. And if there's no one, the altar is open for prayer. If there's a special need or a special touch that you need from God, Somebody bring me a mask. Now, God, let your power 
our fall on mixed drunk people now. Take the way in this place and touch every heart, touch every mind, touch them emotionally and spiritually. Let them go closer to you, God, now. Have your way in this place, God. Let your power fall in here now, God. Let your anointing fall, God. You can rest God in the name of Jesus, God. Just do what you bring pregnancy. Have your way in here. Bless God in the name of Jesus. Sister Zora, God, who is away, God, in Washington, D.C., God. We thank you for her, God. We thank you for everything about her, God. She's a beautiful young lady, God. Bless our children in this place on today, God. God, they cause tears are all around them. If they're trying to suck the life out of them, then God will thank you for your hedge of protection. I ask now, God, that you put a hedge of protection around everyone under the sound of my voice, God. And God, we're thinking now for you pulling down those strongholds that were so easily beset us. God, we're thinking now that we're just going to hang on in there. And we're thinking, God, because we sowed a good seed, God. And we are, God, your seed, and we have veracity, holiness, and righteousness. God, we're thinking now for somebody is getting ready to reap, God, what the soul, God. Somebody's getting ready to reap healing, God. Somebody's getting ready to reap peace, God. Somebody's getting ready to reap a financial blessing, God. Somebody's getting ready to reach a, a reap a walk with you, God. God, touch us now. Somebody is getting ready to reap joy, God. Let them just hang on in there, God. Let them just hang on in there, God. And as they're hanging, God, we ask that you have your way. Let your will be done. And we place our prayer at your feet at your altar and we magnify your name for you are worthy to be praised yes, yes. now God let us all go in peace as you go with us leading us every step of the way acknowledging you as our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and as our King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the Lily of the Valley, the bright morning star, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, our all and our all, our sufficiency, our joy and our peace, our happiness, and our security. And we are holding on to your unchanging hand. We seal this prayer with a hallelujah in the name of the 